All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about classes and interfaces. So on the test, we're asked, given a scenario, write Apex classes and use Apex interfaces. So what's an Apex class? An Apex class is the shape or blueprint of an Apex object. Just like any object-oriented program language, Java, C Sharp, C++ has classes, Apex has classes too. So when you create an opportunity record, you are actually creating an instance of the opportunity class. The opportunity already has built into it the fields, um, the standard attributes, the standard actions. Those are all defined in the class so that when you create an opportunity, you're just creating an instance of the opportunity class. So a class looks something like this public class, my class, you've got some variables and some methods within the class. And it typically consists of first the access modifier, public, private, or global, definition modifiers, abstract, virtual, some sharing keywords with or without sharing, the word class, and then optionally some extensions and implementations. Now every class isn't going to have all these modifiers and keywords and extensions, but these are all the possibilities. So here's a good representation. First you have the access modifier, which can be either private, public, global, your definition modifiers, sharing keywords, and implementations. And I'll go over this in the next slides. So the access modifiers grant access to the class and the content within the class. There's the public access modifier, which makes everything, which I guess makes that class available in the namespace. So that means that if you're writing a class in your instance, in your namespace, then other people can access that class. So this is good uh, if there's multiple developers and uh, a single org or single instance, and you want others to be able to call the methods in that class or see that class, you want to use the public access modifier. The next is private, and it makes the contents of the class only visible within that class. So you can't really call the class um, unless you're actually within the class. <laughs> um, so really some of the only reasons this would be used is if you're writing a test class. Test classes have to be private. And if you're using an inner class within a public class, so you could make a class within a class and maybe that inner class would be private. And finally, you have global. So a gl global access modifier makes it available in any namespace. Uh, and what that means is it's available to any org anywhere. And this is good if you're using, um, if you're developing for a managed package and you're deploying on the app exchange, you'll want to be able to make those classes global so that other people can actually call those methods um, within their global class. After the access modifier, we have the definition modifier. Now, the definition modifier is optional and they're used to extend other classes. So they're used for implements, interfaces, um, any type of inheritance or polymorphism. And there's two types of definition modifiers. There's the virtual definition modifier, which declares that this class allows extension and overrides. And then there's the abstract definition modifier, which declares that the class, the abstract class, contains abstract methods. And we'll go over how this is implemented in later slides. Here's an example of the syntax. Public virtual class marker I have my virtual class with the definition modifier as virtual. And I am within this class, I have a method that I've implemented called public virtual void write. And that method simply writes to the debug log, writing some text. Sharing keywords allow us to determine whether or not we want the Apex class to respect user sharing rules. So by default, Apex runs in system context. So this means regardless of a particular user's access, 
when they're running an Apex code, they can do anything. So if you have a trigger on an opportunity that calls a method from a class to delete the opportunity, then guess what? A user who is not able to delete an opportunity will be able to delete an opportunity by the extension of Apex. So to prevent that, we can use the with sharing keyword, which respects the sharing rules of the user and runs it in the user's context. So it checks whether or not that user running that or accessing that class and running those methods has the ability to do the thing that Apex, that Apex is going to do. Um, and by default, when we write Apex and we don't include a sharing keyword, it's just going to be without sharing, meaning it'll be in system context. So there's really not much use in specifying without sharing unless you just want to explicitly ensure that sharing rules are not enforced. So a few slides ago, we talked about definition modifiers like virtual, which allows us to define virtual classes. When we create a virtual class, we are making it so we can extend the class, inheriting the methods of the class. So here's an example. We have public virtual class marker. We've defined the virtual class called marker that has some virtual methods. And these methods have a default implementation. See the write method debugs writing some text. And the virtual discount method returns this double, 0 0.05. So we can extend this class by using the extends keyword, and we can inherit some of its methods, and optionally override the method if we wanted a different implementation. So in this example, we have a class called yellow marker that extends the marker class, and we'll inherit the right method but overwrite it to do something a little bit different. So instead of writing some text in the yellow marker class, we'll write some text using a yellow marker. So a class can also implement interfaces. And an interface is a class with none of its methods implemented. So it sounds kind of weird. It's a little bit like extending a virtual class but in a virtual class, we have the methods implemented and we can choose to override. In an interface, you actually have to implement the method. So here's an example. We'll have an interface called purchase order and it has a method called double discount, but notice that there's no implementation in this method. We don't know what it does. It's not implemented. So we can have a class called customer purchase order that implements the purchase order and then it defines and implements the method. So in this case, the public discount method will return 0 0.05 as the discount. And then we can have another implementation or uh, here's another example of implementing it a different way. So instead of a customer purchase order, we have an employee purchase order. It implements the purchase order interface and this discount is a little more. It's 10% versus 5%. All right, here's an example question that might be on PD1. Which class respects the user's sharing permissions? Public respects sharing class my class. Private class no sharing my class. Public with sharing class my class. Or public without sharing class my class. Go ahead and put your answer in the comments. And thanks everybody for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to like and subscribe for more.